New Mexico is known for extreme quality antelope. By quality, I mean large bucks. With the, you look in the record book, New Mexico is the number two state in the country as far as Boone and Crockett entries. He's a nice buck, for sure. On this hunt, I'm with a good friend of mine, Bryce DeForest. There's another big buck that just came out by the fence. Just behind that dirt hill, you see it? I'm from Idaho, and Idaho isn't known for big antelope. We uh, chose New Mexico because it's littered with Boone and Crockett antelope, with some that were reaching 85 inches. A lot of people wonder, why would I archery antelope hunt instead of rifle antelope hunt? Rifle tags are really hard to draw. Here in New Mexico, I applied for rifle antelope tags for 12 years before I finally drew a rifle antelope tag. The last two years I've applied for an archery antelope tag, and I've drawn both here. If you are willing to hunt with a different weapon besides a rifle, you're gonna have a better chance of drawing a tag. And if you have a tag, you're going hunting. Bryce, this is, there's no doubt that this is state land. It says right here we're on state land. Oh yeah, sure. And that water hole's only not quite a mile down there. Well, that'll at least make everybody else stay out. <laughs> Let's load up our blinds or whatever we're gonna bring and head out there. Where we're hunting, there's a lot of public land, but it's in this checkerboard fashion. When you're hunting places that people are gonna argue with you about, I'm sure you have your map with you and your GPS. You're always wondering, well, is this public, is this private? This shows you right where you are, and by color coding, you know where you're at, whether you can go or can't go. Still on public, right here, right on the boundary. Right there, about 15 yards away, is the water source we planned on setting our blinds on. When I started planning this hunt, I was calling Bryce, I'm like, man, we gotta get water holes, we gotta get everything marked on the map, get blinds set up, get down there a day early and scout. We showed up and there was water everywhere. It's rained here all summer. So all those tactics I had on my list, the top 10 or 12 tactics kind of got crossed off the list. We are going to spot and stop. This time I brought with me a, a hat that, and a shirt that looks like an, a 3D antelope decoy. Randy came up and said, I'm going to try this antelope decoy. I was like, well, okay, you look pretty funny with it. So he threw it on, walked out there, and I couldn't believe the results. Anyone who's hunted antelope knows their number one defense is their eyes. And it's just really, really hard to get within that, that archery range on an antelope. One of the things that, that is the learning and fun of experimenting with a new piece of equipment like this decoy I have is seeing what they respond to and don't respond to. And I was always trying to go towards them. And they'd let me get to a certain distance, but then they, they didn't like that. Well, I started realizing that maybe if I get close to them and just hold still, maybe they'll do something different. Oh, God, there they come. And sure enough, they would come and investigate. They're all coming right towards me. Bush right there in front of them. Get to that bush, that's 80 yards. Spot and stock is just so much fun because you get eye to eye with that antelope and that's the exhilaration of why we do that. They get to that person, the closest bush I'm gonna shoot. Dang it. Dang it. There I go. This is my new toy for the trip. I'm gonna see what works, what doesn't work, so kinda like fishing. You change lures when they're not biting. You catch something, you keep using that lure till they stop biting. Oh, darn it. I wish I could explain what it is about antelope that makes me just so crazy about antelope hunting. It's the fact that they're so unique to North America. They're strikingly beautiful. To me, they're my favorite game animal. 
We were sitting in this one spot and Bryce says, oh, there's a big buck over there. And he just went over the lip about 300 yards. And I said, well, I'm gonna try this crazy hat thing. And I just stayed on him, stayed on him, stayed on him. I'd rub and scrape when he'd rub and scrape. Went out there, he'd look and try to keep an eye on me. He wasn't sure what to make of me. He would be trying to move his head and then dip down the antelope hat would fall off. I would just sit back and crack up laughing. Buck would look up to him like, what was that? That was weird. And then he'd put it back on, start crawling, and the buck bedded down and just looked at him. I just couldn't believe it was working out the way it was. The beauty of using that decoy is it helps you in a spot and stock scenario, but it's just still very difficult. Getting that closed gap of, for me, under 60 yards is just a difficult thing to do. That antelope let me get within 55 yards bouncing between 55 and 65 and right in front of that bush. He turned and walked a little bit and I was thinking he was walking straight across in front of me so my range was still 55. Come on. And when I shot, the arrow went right underneath him. Dang it! Darn it! When he turned, he was going that way, his broadside. And I had him right at 55 yards. I got my strap all hung up on my hand. I thought he was going straight downhill, but he probably went more away from me, and I went right underneath him. This is more fun than any antelope hunting I have done in a long time. We had scouted this area before the season started and we'd seen one really big buck and it just looked beautiful. Whenever you hunt with the partners, there's always the who gets to shoot first. And there were certain bucks that I thought were really cool, other bucks Bryce thought was really cool. So if we were in that area where Bryce thought the buck was one he would want, it was his chance to stock. sees me. Oh, he's looking at me. This buck, he comes out and Randy had both have looked at him and we knew he was huge. We both guessed 85 inches, huge hooks on his horns, really high prongs. And when I saw him coming through that wildflowers, it was just amazing. I was just shaking like a leaf. I couldn't believe he was coming the way he was. It's, it's just so interesting to watch. I, I think Bryce, in his mind, was thinking, this is never going to happen, because I know that's what I was thinking. Shoot, it almost worked. If I could have closed it another 100 yards before he saw me, if we get lucky, maybe, maybe he'll be back again. Spot and stock is realistic. I think you have to do 10 to 12 stocks to make one happen, but it is realistic. You ready for this, Randy? Mm-mm. Oh, bless you with some light. <laughs> when I first came here, my plan was to be real Spartan in my camp, and it rained every day. I would have been a drowned rat if I would have tried to do what my original plan was. So we set up the wall tents, we set up a bigger camp, and we had to travel a lot. A little chillier this morning. Yeah, it is. A little 
find a big one here. I'm an on your own type of hunter. I've never gone guided. It's just been a way I was raised, how I've grown up hunting. It's nothing against guys or anything. It's just, I like the fulfillment of doing stuff on my own and planning from the get go, from the tags I'll draw to the hunts I go on to the strategies we do. I don't care what you want to do, Bryce, but I'm going to shoot that buck. You could use that cow as the decoy or walk right up towards that cow, huh? That's what I'm going to do. the antelope. What the hell is going on? What is that? Holy crap, there's two big bulls coming right down the fence line there. <sighs> of all things, I have an antelope at 48 yards, and here comes two bull elk scaring everything down the fence. Oh well, it's only 7 o'clock, and I'm going to go get one. I guess coming from Idaho, I'm looking for a record class animal. When we came to New Mexico and we were seeing all these bucks, it was real easy to hold out for that big one. What do you think? Isn't he that tall one? That He's that tall one. Go get him, go get him. So after I had seen the buck, I separated from Randy so I could get closer to the animal. I had expectations when I came to this hunt, and that's probably why I held out for so long. I wanted a Boone and Crockett buck, or close to. It's a little out of range. When I saw this specific buck that I knew would be close to that, I was excited. That is a big buck. 65 yards, I can do the shot. There he's drawing. He got him. I think I got him, buddy. Watch him, watch him. Holy smokes, he hit that thing. What do you think? Huh? It looked like a good shot. It looked perfect. Thanks, buddy. You deserve that oh, one, Bryce. No one's worked harder than you have. When I shot this buck, a dream had been fulfilled. I shot the buck I'd come for. He was huge. And with all the challenges we had up to this point, I couldn't believe this just happened. Oh. oh dude. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Look how long that is, Randy. Bryce, what oh. a buck. I'm still at a loss as to how Bryce could have stocked that buck. He's able to get within 65 yards, and it's in ground that has about that much vegetation. I, I, it's unexplainable to me, the, the flukiness of what works, when it works, what doesn't work, and why it doesn't work. This is why we hunt. This is why we do a big guy. Always on your own, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, we're losing light, Bryce. Truck's back there about a mile. I might be able to get the truck right to this little spur road. Oh, there. yeah. No, but I'm going to go do it real quick. Thanks, buddy. Thanks again. Thanks for all you did. The last few days of the hunt, it rained a little less. And so we left these blinds, and finally we thought, you know, with less rain and less rain, maybe they're gonna come in and water. So one late afternoon, we drove out on a bluff where we could look down into the blinds, and here's three really nice bucks right there watering. Don't you think we should try those antelope at that blind tomorrow? 
I'm thinking long and hard, Bryce, that we set those up as a fallback plan and it be time to fall back. The realization that this is gonna be so difficult spot and stocking, I said, you know, at these afternoons, I wanna go sit these blinds. I wanna see what comes in. I wanna see if one of those big bucks come in. And that's what I did. You know, I'm hunting a blind. Today is my last day. It's kinda all or nothing. This blind has been sitting here for a week. Gives you better options, more opportunity that one might come in. They're thirsty and they're coming to you instead of you coming to them. Them coming to you is always easier. And right away, one buck comes from around the corner, does a little bit of back and forth, goes down and drinks. And I told Bryce, I said, I'm not gonna shoot that buck. He leaves, here comes another buck that had watched him from over on the west. He comes under the fence and he walks in, gets his drink. And I was thinking about shooting that buck, but again, he was an immature buck, maybe a year and a half or two and a half year old buck. And I let him go. When you decide you're gonna let a buck go and you only got an hour left in your hunt, you kind of wonder, am I making the right decision? Last night. Last night with what, 30 minutes, if that? If that, 20. For those of you who hunt, you know the mental struggle of what you go through. Like, wow, can I make this shot? I've proven I can miss this shot. Can I make it? I took my deep breath, pulled back, boom, and the rest is history. Oh, look at that, huh? That is what you hope for. Good job, buddy. He didn't make it. He made it up over the hump, and that was the end of the gig for him. Congrats, buddy. Congrats. Oh, he's bigger than we thought he was. Look at the length on him. He's heavy, too. No idea he was that good. If you were going to come here and do these hunts as guided hunts, you're going to pay three to $5,000 to come and do this. And we did it for less than $1,000. That's still a lot of money. But where can you go on a week vacation and have this much fun for less than a thousand dollars? I can't wait till next year. If we're lucky enough to draw again, we will be back. This is why you sit in blinds. This is why you come to New Mexico. This is why you do the things that are called hunting. When I'm driving home thinking about this hunt, I, there's a lot of things I'm going to think about. As always, I'm going to think about the fun time I spent with a friend out chasing analog. I'm going to think about the new tactic that I figured out using this DVD clip. I'm also going to think about how beautiful it is to be out in the west when it's green in August in the monsoon season, and I'm going to start planning my hunt for next year.